This is the download from Sounds Profitable, the most important news from this week and why it matters to people in the business of podcasting. I'm Manuela Bedoya. And I'm Shreya Sharma. The download is brought to you by Magellan AI. Track the trends in spend, ad load, podcasts on YouTube, and more with Magellan AI's Advertising Benchmark Report for Q1, available now. You can find a link in the description or visit Magellan.ai. This week, Sounds Profitable debuts the power of brands in podcast study. Spotify director discusses sensitive topics tech. Audio ads are effective if not disruptive, and the complications of YouTube's RSS feed ingestion. Let's get started. This Wednesday, Sounds Profitable debuted The Power of Brands in Podcasts, a cut from the podcast landscape study. In May and June of this year, Sounds Profitable, in partnership with Signal Hill Insights, fielded a survey of 2,400 Americans aged 18 and over for the podcast landscape study. 974 of the respondents indicated they were very or somewhat likely to listen to a podcast about a favorite brand or product and have been labeled brand fans. That's 41% of respondents saying they would likely listen to a podcast about a favorite brand. Brand fans are more likely to be positive about a company's involvement with a podcast, are more likely to listen to podcasts with other people, and are natural evangelists for both the brands they love and podcasting in general. 54% of people who have listened to podcasts say they would recommend podcasts to their social circle. When narrowed down to brand fans, they're 9% more likely to recommend podcasts to friends. They're also more likely to take recommendations. For the wider population surveyed, very likely and somewhat likely, Responses to the question, how likely are you to listen to a podcast recommended by someone in your social circle, add up to 55%. When narrowed down to brand fans, the number jumps to 80%. Co-listening is also big with brand fans, who bring at least an additional one and a half people to the listening occasion. Branded podcast producers would benefit from specifically researching co-listening with their own audiences to see what their actual audience potential might be. Three of the top five reasons non-listening brand fans provided for not trying podcasts boil down to simple education, not negative preconceptions of the podcasting medium. This means brands could also be a person's introduction to podcasting overall. Branded podcasts have the potential to not only find an audience, but a dedicated and vocal audience of fans who will eagerly spread the show as far as they can. This week from Amrita Khalid in Hot Pod, an interview with Spotify's director of global ad platform integrity, David Byrne. Byrne spoke to what methods Spotify and Integral Ad Science have developed to monitor brand safety and suitability. Their tech attempts to avoid the old-school brand safety problem of outright banning keywords. Here's a quote from Byrne. I was working with a brand recently that had Janet Jackson as one of their negative keywords because they hadn't updated their list from the 2004 Super Bowl. That kind of gives you an idea of how antiquated keywords are now and how it doesn't really serve its purpose, especially in the audio space. End quote. Spotify's tech instead uses contextual cues to figure out what topic is being discussed and if it qualifies as one of their proprietary sensitive topics, built from the Global Alliance for Responsible Media or GARM framework. While no direct labeling controls are announced for podcasters to influence how their show is tagged by the system, Burns says Spotify fully explains how the categorization and contextual tools work so creators can understand the system. This week from Adam Bowie, RSS feed ingestion is coming soon to YouTube, allowing audio-only podcasters to automate the process of getting the podcast on YouTube. As that implementation gets closer to wide release, Bowie focuses on a potential speed bump for larger podcasters taking advantage of this option, YouTube's ad policy. Similarly to YouTube's policy for videos in general, Podcasts uploaded to YouTube may only have advertisements in the form of host-read endorsements. Similar to how YouTubers can only run host endorsement ads, podcast RSS feeds cannot have either baked-in or dynamically inserted ads made by anyone other than the show. A quote from Bowie. To date, the podcasting ecosystem has been built on the basis that the producer creates the podcast, 
and then either sells advertising themselves or works with a sales partner to do that for them. Then the title is distributed, advertised, embedded into it across various podcast apps where consumers listen. There is no real difference between me hearing a title in Apple Podcasts or Pocket Casts. The same advert is delivered regardless and priced in the same way. End quote. Uploading to YouTube also prevents the possibility of selling back catalog. As once the audio file is transcoded into a video, it cannot be changed without manually deleting the YouTube version and re-uploading the episode. Both hosting services and larger podcasts with existing brand relationships to run dynamically inserted announcer read ads will have to adjust their strategies and commitments if they want to automatically publish an RSS feed on YouTube at the same time as other podcast platforms. Last Friday from Marketing Brew's Alyssa Myers, The Sound of Suitability, a new report from Integral Ad Science surveyed 1,000 U.S. digital audio listeners in June. Echoing Sounds Profitable's findings last year in the study after these messages, host-read podcast ads drove the most purchases, 49%, but announcer-read followed closely behind at 45%. While 44% of respondents said they're open to hearing audio ads, 58% stress the importance that ads are relevant to the content they're being served in. As far as advertising on brand unsuitable content is concerned, respondents were more likely to react negatively to ads on music with unsuitable content than podcasts with the same content. 55% of respondents reacted negatively to brands running ads between violent songs, but only 32% had the same reaction to brands in a podcast discussing violence. Podcasts are great at connecting with audiences. It's vital that advertisers take that into consideration when building ads specifically for podcasts. As long as advertising meets audiences where they are, podcast listeners tend to be more accepting of advertisements on potentially brand unsuitable content. Finally, it's time for our quick hits. These are articles that didn't quite make the cut for today's episode, but are still worth including in your weekend reading. This week... Confused about video? The listeners aren't, by Tom Webster. While the question, what is a podcast, can lead to complicated responses from podcasters, respondents to the podcast landscape study are pretty confident in what qualifies as a podcast. YouTube passes Netflix as top video source for teens, by Keith Leeswing. A long-running Piper Sandler study finds for the first time ever that YouTube has passed Netflix as top video source for teens. Given the many podcasts Netflix has commissioned, one wonders how much teen traffic they'd regain if those podcasts were also available in the Netflix app. Brands are taking notice of Gen Alpha by Jasmine Chino. Given existing legislation makes targeting methods difficult as the oldest Gen Alpha member is 13, brands are resorting to more creative projects to meet younger audiences where they're at, which could include the rising popularity of kids and family podcasts. ARN Takeover Bid for SEA by Chris Pash If successful, the acquisition bid would lead to Australia having two national media organizations with independent ownership of each other. Streaming power tools come to Spotify from Podnews. The new system will allow users to upload and monetize video podcasts on Spotify, access enhanced analytics reporting, and use a new clickable promo system to cross-promote an episode with other podcasts on Spotify. And that was The Download, brought to you by Sounds Profitable. I know we went through today's stories fast, so be sure to check out the links to every article mentioned right in your podcast listening app or on soundsprofitable.com slash podcast. And thank you for sticking with us as we bring you the top stories you might have missed from the past week. I'm Manuela Bedoya. And I'm Shreya Sharma. Our producers are Brian Barletta, Gavin Gaddis, and Tom Webster. Special thanks to Art19 for hosting The Download. And thanks to you for joining us. Robot? Download complete.